responding to XRP haters, talking about Bitcoin, talking about some hot altcoins like Tau and even Kadena. This is the Ask Maddie Show. My boy, Maddie, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Like I said, one of my favorite parts of the week is uh, doing the show with you guys. I love when you guys bring the questions, uh, challenge me a bit here and uh, allow me some opportunity to give you guys some of my insights and thoughts. So uh, excited to talk about that on today's show. We have a great show today, team. If you watched the After Hours show, it was a banger. And if you did not see that, make sure you go back and watch that from Monday. But before we get into the content here, become a Crypto Charge member. Click the link in the pinned comment down below. Code YouTube <laughs> gets you 50% <laughs> off any membership, monthly, quarterly, or annual. Uh, but most people go with the annual or the monthly option. It just ends up working out better. All right, Maddie, I'm ready for this content today. I'm interested to see what you have to say to this. And we're starting off really hot there. I just checked right now. I accidentally uh, didn't grab the first letter of the sentence he was uh, writing out here. So, Maddie, are you ready to get into some actual hate right now? Let's do it. Zach, I guess, you're, you're keeping your followers poor with your XRP nonsense. Utility is a meme focus on bull run narratives. Wow, there's a lot to unpack here, man. Uh, mostly because this makes zero sense whatsoever. Specifically, the second part of your sentence. Like, I understand, you know, some people have this feeling about the the first part about, you know, I'm keeping my my followers poor or whatever. Um, but you know, you guys can't get enough of Ethereum, um, and Ethereum literally didn't do a damn thing uh, cycle wise until the last like two and a half weeks out here. Um, so you know, I and I wouldn't say that anyone would ever challenge the utility of Ethereum or the long term trajectory of Ethereum or you were keeping your followers poor by talking about Ethereum uh, because that's one of the quote guaranteed winners out there, right? So I think that first of all, you're associating price action with adoption or quality of an asset. Second part, let's just read this out loud. Utility is a meme focus on bull run narratives. What does that even mean, dude? Um, I, I can tell that you're new or you don't understand the space and you've been in the space for a minute. Um, either, either way, like you really shouldn't be speaking if, unless you understand what you're talking about. What does a meme focus even mean? That doesn't make any sense to me. If you're talking about meme coins, you're saying that utility is me like saying that, oh, because it has utility, it's going to do well, like communities rally around meme coins in a bull market. It doesn't make any sense. Um, if you look at XRP's performance in the last cycle, even though we didn't make a new all-time high, right? It was over a 10x return from the cycle lows to the cycle highs with the lawsuit intact. We've been making consistently higher highs and higher lows on daily and weekly timeframes. And I've always had a very big time horizon with XRP. Now, XRP is not my only play. I've said that a million times. I have plenty of other exposures in smaller cap coins and other coins that are newer coins. And a lot of those coins have done really well. APA3 recently has broken out very aggressively and I've rotated a bunch of my APA3 into Casper and XRP because they're laggards. There's a strategy to this, guys, right? Um, and some of these coins I plan on holding longer and I'm planning on them being long-term bags as well. Um, so, you know, for me, I'm, I'm not this, you know, uh, impatient little imp in my chair here. And if I don't get my XRP target by tomorrow, then I'm done with XRP and I'm going to stay poor. I've built a really, really nice position and a great portfolio at current market prices. And some of these, you know, prices I bought are going to provide me great opportunity in the future to when we have the ability to borrow against my crypto portfolio. And XRP is probably going to be one of those bigger assets I'm going to be able to borrow against without having to sell that XRP and still be able to access that liquid cash, invest in other crypto, invest in real estate, whatever I want to do. So you can go ahead and stay very poor um, because you don't understand what the word utility even means. Shaw Hernandez, I have invested a lot in XRP. XTC, XLM, Casper, VeChain, HBAR, Algorand, AGIX, Gala, QSP, Quant, Jasmine. Can you recommend best bang for your buck cryptos? Maybe five. Oof, maybe five, brother. Not, <laughs> not even a, a little Venmo here. in the, not even a Venmo <laughs> cracks here. Um, <laughs> No, I'm just playing. So first of all, guys, uh, we have all this information on our website for you guys. This is something that we've spent quite a bit of time working on developing, and it's probably out of like all the features on our website, other than the live show updates, people go to the most, and that's our coin library. So we don't list every single coin in there. It's not possible. You know, we're 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 not an enormous 20 person team that is able to you know accommodate 500 tokens. But what we have done is you know reviewed tokens 
put information in there about tokens and then giving you guys targets. And within our portal there, you're able to sort through um, by exchange, by ROI, which is what you're looking at here, return on investment or return on equity, sometimes referred to as ROE. And you're able to sort through those by ROE. So we can say one to 200%, two to three, five to seven, and then 700% plus. So you can go ahead and sort through that. You can also even get more granular with it. Hey, I only want to see small cap coins that have a 7x return. I only want to see small cap coins that are on Coinbase that have a 7x or uh, 7x plus or greater return by end of cycle. Um, I don't see that you have, uh, let's see, do we have, we do have Casper in here. Cool. Um, it really just depends on what your goals are long term as well, right? Um, you know, I think APA3 is a bit expensive right now. I can't really keep it, you know, um, at, advertising or recommending um, as we've already taken a little bit of a trim there. Um, I think that, you know, Zcash is still a, a great play and, and is offering really great asymmetric returns. We've started to see a little bit of resiliency from like that 18 and $20 region. I think it's still an incredible, incredible play. Um, if you wanted to kind of get a little bit spicy here and you wanted to add in something like a decentralized exchange, I think Uniswap is still pretty far back in its cycle right now. Um, I really like the project Helium, but it's a little too expensive for me right now. I am personally looking for a pullback in Helium. I would love to build a position for both the short and long term with Helium uh, because I think it's a great fundamental project. But um, I'd recommend checking out our website. It's really just very, very simple if you sign up there to be able to go through all that. You get 30 days free with any membership. So you get a whole 30 days before you get charged anything to check out the library, check out the Discord, see if it's something you're, you're interested in. But that's where our information can be found like this. Handport63 says, I'm worried that Bitcoin will continue to rise. Should I avoid buying right now? Uh, so one of the things that we've talked about pretty extensively on our show is retracement levels. And that's not just unique to me. A lot of analysts use the Fibonacci's as, you know, gu guides for uh, both where we are within potentially like re resistance areas as well as where those targets come in. Um, as we've continued to approach 618, 702 and potentially even 786 here, those are always the areas of caution for me. Uh, and, and, you know, there's always the this time could be different and we don't stutter at all at these retracement levels. And then we just go ahead and just break into parabolic new all-time highs, and that's entirely possible. But like I've mentioned previously, in the last cycle, we got a very reasonable, slow, normal pullback of about 50%, um, and that was without the C19 sell-off. Uh, so it's, you know, even if we were to see like a 30% knockback and, and revisit some of those, you know, higher lows and establish one in like the high 30s, low 40s, that would still be a very clean and healthy trough a structure for Bitcoin in a structure I'd actually prefer to see, and it would make me more bullish. I'd be more bullish on a 30 to 50% pullback um, from like, let's say the 55 to 56K region here on Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, that's what I would potentially look for. I think that again, Bitcoin is not offering best bang for your buck. I think it's risen very, very aggressively from a structural standpoint. We're at the top of the structure right now. Um, and what we've also seen historically with all coin seasons, right, is that when Bitcoin reaches the top of his reach trace levels, and if it's able to tread sideways a little bit and dominance drops a bit, that's when you see all coins start to make their catch up moves and move to their respective 50%, 618, 702 retraces, right? So me personally right now, I'm definitely focused on the all coin market and specifically on assets that are not up at their 50, 618, 702 retraces right now. All right, Maddie, it's time to chart, man. Cryptic, Crypto Zero, uh, he wants Tau. Pop in all coin right. on TikTok. I see it all over our YouTube and Twitter. This is, this is, this is where it's at, Maddie, apparently. All right. Well, she's she's a young girl here, um, listed in uh, March of 23. So really not a ton of price history, but not any different than other structures that we've seen here. Again, guys, look at this. You get the sideways accumulation here, and then that breakout just seems to come out of absolutely nowhere, right? Can you guys tell me what happened on November 6th that made Teo this fundamental masterpiece? I absolutely <laughs> cannot find a single thing that tells you on November 5th or November 6th what catalyst drove Tao out of this accumulation zone, right? So I want you guys to be aware of that. A lot of you guys look for narratives and like, there's nothing wrong with that, but like price action's price action sometimes, guys. We look at the fibs, we go high, we go low. You guys can see that we, first of all, crash came in for a 702, pulls back to the 236, nice little consolidation here, nice breakout. You guys can see that we actually topped perfectly 4.236, a little bit of resistance here at the 3.618, found strong support at the 100 day. This has been pretty uniform across a lot of alts here uh, in January of this year. We've seen a pretty big rise here. Throwback to the 4.236, and we're reaching out to the 8 extension here. From basis structure here to current market, we are up 13 and a half X. So would I recommend buying tail at this very second? I wouldn't, right? Like even if you look at what the rise has been since January 6th to current, right? It's been about a 232% move. 
I'm showing you guys that I'm being objective about this because I've talked about APA3 for over a year, specifically on YouTube. And now that we're in these areas where I said I was going to start trimming and we've seen big impulses, I'm telling you, don't buy APA3 right now. It's too expensive. And that doesn't mean that I'm saying anything about APA3 and I don't think it's going to go higher. I think that you're now just putting yourself at a more asymmetric opportunity than some of the other opportunities out there right now. So if you're really desperate to get it at a tail, right, you could look for a pullback to a double bottom, right, to the 219 region. Um, somebody goes, well, it's never going there again. Maybe it's not. That's the the most shallow, the, mo the most shallow highest low that I would consider to be like the the only entry that you could get in off of a very, very shallow high low would be like the 3.618 area in here. That'd be around 353. That would be just at least a pullback into this previous high over here and then a move higher. You guys can see that an extension is very close here at the 738 region. So we're very close to it. Okay. So guys, just be careful. I know this is exciting. I know everyone wants to be a part of the momentum, but try at least try to wait for a small pullback to get engaged because a lot of people buy in and they get upset and then prices down 50% and they see another asset that goes up 200% and they rotate into that asset and they go, oh, well, I'm up this much. Well, how much did you take an L on in the last asset that you bought into to, but to roll it into this one? That's the real math there that you have to calculate not just the the dopamine math that you're doing in the, in the very big moment there um of oh, i'm up 3x right now well you're up 3x but you're also down 60 percent from you entering from too high of a point got another here sean don 9543 he wants cadena and he's really asking here could it see 28 dollars again all right let's go ahead and do a little ta here on cadena again reason i don't buy into the hype because big impulses, no pullbacks, a lot of times leads to a revisitation of the breakout. So <laughs> sorry about that, team. Um, so when we look at the FIB sequence here, right? Swing high, swing low. We got a long way to go up to that back row 236 here from the $25 high that we had previously. There's definitely major imbalance to get left behind up here. A little bit of weekly consolidation from the five to 670 region up in here. Um, we also have kind of the 50 week that started printing up in that area. We have started to break over some of these MAs, specifically the 50 week, which has been kind of an initial signal of bullish breakout on a lot of altcoins here. We saw this with a variety of different altcoins. Once they get over that 50 week, they really don't have to struggle with it for too long generally before they're able to make another big impulse higher. We also have a little bit of resistance over in here. This is going to be kind of that first top that we might run into a little bit of trouble with is the 232 region. If you're able to flip this as a support, um, then we've definitely successfully worked our way into higher opportunities for retrace levels. The move from 230 to $7 is going to be a lot easier if we're able to build a base on top of the 220 region. Um, and then we even have just retrace levels at 17 and 19. If we're to make new all-time highs, we're talking about a triple digit uh, coin here looking at from a, a dollar fourteen standpoint. So I definitely think it's at the minimum possible to revisit some of these pockets here, seven to fourteen dollars. And of course, you know, we continue to get listings and, and volume and uh, momentum here. We could definitely see new all-time highs. But again, I don't want to count any alts out that just haven't completely done that yet because you guys can see that we had a base in here that was built from May all the way through October and we've actually breached and we're trying to flip that area right now. So if 80 cents can be maintained as key support in here, the move towards 232 looks rather imminent. Maddie, awesome show today. Um, team, again, we are banging out these shows. If you notice here, we show up. We don't miss days. We show up on Christmas. We showed up on Thanksgiving. <laughs> we showed up on Monday. It was a bank holiday. We show up here, and we are committed here to you guys, bringing you the content. Maddie here is a genius, and that's why he has his own show. So, team, if you have any questions for Maddie here, leave them in the comment section down below. I love reading them. I will always respond to them positive or or negative, I will respond to them. And if you like the show, I have to say, I post a lot of clips on TikTok. They're always going to hit TikTok first. So make sure you're over there if you're not able to make it to the shows and get those bite-sized pieces of content because I'll throw, Maddie just did a, a towel analysis here. You know I'm going to throw that up there, Maddie, because everyone's searching towel right now. So right. I'm going to let that be known. Their team, Maddie, am I missing anything to close out the show today? Uh, first of all, guys, I love ask, answering your questions here on the Ask Maddie show. Um, it's it's always very exciting. But as you guys know, across multiple platforms is where we're trying to garner a lot of these questions from. We can't get to every single question. So if you guys have regular crypto questions, the best place to get them answered 
immediately or near immediately and regularly um, is through our program. So that $50 a month membership with code YouTube, uh, not only gets you access to the coin library, the daily updates, the morning updates, our fundamental education material, it also gets you access to our discord where if you tag at moderators uh, in general chat or tech support, we generally get back to you guys within a few hours and more often than not very, very quickly. So if you guys have a lot of crypto questions, don't wait for us to answer them here on the Ask Maddie show. Check out CryptoCharge.com. I want to make sure you guys get taken care of as quickly as possible. You guys can page me and I'll get right back to you. <laughs> but until next time, team, we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>